What's going on YouTube? So you don't need me to tell you that the Telluride is probably one of the most sought out mainstream three row crossovers ever. Uh, absolutely everybody wants one. And today I'm standing next to a different trim level that we've not sampled yet. This is the S model. Now this is the value oriented trim level, but still has a lot of nice style from the SX prestige level. So let's go ahead and check it out and see if this is the Telluride to buy. So like I already mentioned, the S trim level really retains a lot of the same styling elements from the SX trim level. That's kind of the appeal of the S. So up in the front here, you've got that same signature Telluride design that everybody absolutely loves. Uh, we have the boxy front grille with the chrome accents as well as Telluride spelled out across the top and the silver at the bottom. However, you do have to lose something for this price point, and that is going to be these headlights. So these are halogen projector uh, headlights with the LED daytime running light around them. You'll notice it is not amber, it's white instead, and you also have the incandescent turn signal and you don't have LED fog lights. So like I said, you do give up a little bit there for this price point. However, these wheels are a place where you certainly are not giving up anything. These are very stylish looking 20 inch contrast alloy wheels. Uh, that's the same size as what you get on the fully loaded SX trim level and they definitely stand out a lot more than the basic wheels you get on the LX and the EX trim levels. And then moving on up here to your mirrors, these are gonna be body colored. You have LED turn signal indicators, you have heating and standard blind spot monitoring. I got one thing to mention here at the side. Now on the S model, you're actually gonna have the chrome door handles, which is gonna be S and SX exclusive. So that's actually a really nice touch for something in this price range. Now going around to the rear design itself, of course, America's in love with the Telluride. I'm in love with the Telluride. It looks so good back here in the rear. Um, and that's really gonna continue for this S model. Now, as far as the individual design elements, we have Telluride spelled out across the back. And then for the tail lights, this is gonna be an area where you are gonna see a change because this is a fully incandescent tail light as well as the turn signal down below that. Uh, whereas if you go for the EX or the SX trim, that's actually gonna make it LED to give it a more premium look. And then dropping down, we have this silver diffuser down here, as well as dual chrome exhaust outlets on the right side. Now, Kia throws in the vast majority of the safety systems, not all of them, though, as standard across the Telluride lineup. So their drive-wise safety suite is going to include forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, and lane keeping assist. However, you have to go up to the SX trim to get the auto high beam headlamps. Well guys, if you haven't taken a second to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below, please do that. It really helps us out and it doesn't cost you anything. So what are you losing? So go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and check out the inside before we take it out in a test drive. So the S Telluride does come standard with the same smart entry system and key fob as the other trim levels. And you will also notice you have remote start built into the key fob for 2021. And then again inside the vehicle itself, just press this button on the door handle. All right, and taking a look inside of this cabin, of course, this does have that signature Telluride design that still looks upscale even on this S trim level. Now let's go ahead and talk about your different interior color and material options to start off with. So the S trim level is gonna come standard with leatherette seating. However, I will say it does a very convincing job of real leather, including even having the perforation inside of the seat. Uh, as far as your color options, this is the black option. You also have the choice of gray, but if you want any of the like, you know, fancy stuff like butterscotch, that will require the loaded model. 
Turning over here to the door trim, you will find leatherette across the armrest with the color contrast stitching detail. The top part is going to be nicely padded and we have a silver trim. All four of the windows will be one touch automatic. And as far as the seats themselves, these are going to be eight-way power adjusting with two-way lumbar support. And like I already said, this is the leatherette seating, but it's very nice still. Now, of course, this S trim level is positioned as the value-oriented trim level, so that does mean it's going to be slightly less luxurious than the SX Prestige, of course, but I am happy to say it is still nice in here. So across our upper dashboard, this is all going to be finished in a soft-touch plastic, and as you can see, it does have a stitching detail as well. Down below that, we have a silver trim in place of the faux wood trim level. Uh, we also have some more silver through here. We uh, still have our handlebars on board, but these are going to be hard plastic on the S trim level instead of with Napa leather. Uh, but everything in here does fit together extremely well, and it looks not very nice as well. Now to start up the Telluride, just put your foot on the brake and press the standard button. Now once it fires up and you take a look at the gauges, you will see they are different from the SX model. That's because we have a three and a half inch multi-function display right there in the middle. Uh, it is a little bit small, but you have still the choice between all the standard affair of information, including your safety systems. And if you want that blind view monitor, head up display or seven inch display, you can get all those things with the SX model. Now coming back to the steering wheel, I am happy to report this is largely the same as the loaded model. So we have a really nice smooth leather material with color contrast stitching. Still got the silver buttons and the stitching on the airbag cover. The wheel itself is going to be manual tilt and telescoping and heating is not available on the S. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into interior storage because this is a three row family SUV after all. So underneath our center console, you can see very generously sized. We have a little removable tray on top there. And once you get that out of the way, you'll see just how deep this is. Really nice. Uh, there's a felt lining at the bottom as well. When we stick these coupons in here, it's absolutely no problem whatsoever. Now in front of that, we've got two cup holders. We have a little storage area right there. And then we have a very large storage bin right here in the front. Uh, we have a spot right here. This would be a wireless phone charger on some of the higher trim levels. And then we have our traditional connections right there. Now coming back to the shifter. This continues to be leather wrapped on the S trim level. Operation super simple. You're just going to pull back for drive, bump over here to the left if you want to control it manually, but there are not any paddle shifters. And then for reverse, you'll just go up to the R. Once you do that, you'll see that we have the standard backup camera on board. Uh, it does have active trajectory and it also has rear parking sensors, which are standard on even the base LX model. So that's definitely a nice touch. And then back behind the shifter, we have our electronic parking brake, our brake hold function, as well as the defeat for the auto start stop system. Above that, we also have our controls for the four wheel drive system and our drive modes. As you've seen so far, by and large, the cabin is not too different from the loaded model. Uh, however, we do have a manual climate control set up here that's shared with the base LX trim level. Uh, you got four different modes here for your fan speeds. We have our zones right there and other physical controls located right here. So it is very simple to use. Uh, down here on our signature Telluride handlebars, you have standard three-stage heated seats on the S model. But if you want ventilation, you're going to have to go up to the EX trim level. Okay, so now that brings us up to the audio system. So we have the six speaker basic sound system on board with this trim level. So let's go ahead and give it a sample. Okay, definitely impressed by the sound system. Uh, 
with uh, only six speakers, it really fills up this cabin well. Has surprisingly good bass, so I think most people will be more than satisfied with this setup. All right, so now we are at the display. Obviously, this is the smaller display of the two options. This is the eight inch display, as opposed to the 10.25 inch display. This, of course, is the same as what we've seen in other Kia and Hyundai products. You have some physical controls here on the side. You will have standard Android Auto and standard Apple CarPlay, and built-in navigation comes on the upper and trim levels. Now, moving above that, we've got a manual dimming mirror on board with this one. The lighting up here is LED. And then you'll see we have a moonroof, even though this is second to base trim level. It is standard equipment as well, so I'm definitely happy to see that. Alrighty, now of course you know that the Telluride is a family-oriented vehicle, so the second and third rows are both very important, and I'm happy to say this is one of the best things you can get in the entire segment. Now, as far as the space is concerned, I'll talk about that first. You have 42 inches of rear legroom, 40 inches of rear headroom, which places it above the Toyota Highlander and the Honda Pilot. There is a lot of space back here. As you can see behind Drew's seating position, I have, I would say, 8 inches of rear legroom. My feet can easily slide up underneath the seat and I can also slide these standard captain's chairs back further to give even more leg room. I also want to point out captain chairs are going to be standard on the S. The EX gets bench seating so if you want that you're going to have to go for the EX. Now as far as the features are concerned we do have cup holders up here in the middle. Dropping down we have a 12 volt power outlet but they haven't forgot about the USBs. They're actually integrated here into the back of each seat back so you have two of those as well. Up top, this is where you would normally find the climate controls. Um, I'm not really sure. It has the temperature adjustment on here, but it's still a manual setup in the front, so I'm not exactly sure how this works, but you still do have a few adjustments as well as LED lighting and vents up top. Now let's go ahead and get back into the third row. So if you have the captain's chairs, in order to get back here, you just push this button right here, and it does fold it forward as well as slide it, so it's very easy to get back here. Now sitting in the third row itself. This is honestly one of my favorite third rows in the segment. It might be my favorite one. I mean, this has a lot of space. You're going to be rated at 31 inches of rear leg room, 38 inches of rear headroom. Just place it above the competition as well. And as you can see, my feet have room to slide up underneath the seat. And the thigh support is also pretty good. Now, as far as the features, uh, they're also going to throw in cup holders as well as a smart charging USB port. We have a vent up top as well. Now walking up to the tailgate, you would have a hands-free power one on the EX as well as above that, uh, but this S is just going to have a manual one, so just push the button under the lid and you can lift it open. Now as far as the space itself is going to be concerned, it's going to be rated at 21 cubic feet behind the third row seats. That expands to 46 cubic feet if you fold them, and as a maximum you have 87 cubic feet. That is above the Toyota Highlander and Honda Pilot as well. So. This is one of the largest offerings you can get in all of the different measurements. And as far as the finishings, we have a nice carpeting along the floor. If we lift it up, there's more storage up under there, as well as a spare tire. And then to fold down the third row, all we have to do is grab this little strap, push forward, and it folds right down. And you also have buttons here on the left side to fold the second row seats, as well as a 12 volt outlet. Now over here in your passenger seat, this one is going to be manually adjusting. You have to get the EX to have an eight-way power one. Um, but in front, as far as the glove box is concerned, I like it. You know, Kia has done a very good job with this uh, glove box. It's pretty decently sized. It's also really nicely felt lined. I'm surprised to see that it's felt lined. And there's also LED illumination inside. And up top, we do have a sun visor, more LED illumination, a large mirror, and we can also detach and extend it. So first taking off in this Telluride S. Um, I am happy to report Kia keeps the powertrain situation exactly the same for the S trim level. So you're still going to have that same smooth 3.8 liter V6 engine making 291 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. 
Yeah, and that is right in line with the competition. And it's just really smooth. Like, you can really just appreciate that V6 engine and its smoothness. It really has a smooth feel that you're going to love. Now, something else I think you're going to love is just going to be, once you get up to speed, how well this Telluride just drives and just is, comfort is the number one priority for this Telluride. And, you know, we're cruising going around 55 miles per hour, and it honestly just feels like we're sitting still. I mean, it's just, oh, it's so comfortable. We've been in the Telluride many times, and I'm happy to say that even though this isn't the top trim level, it still rides, I feel, just as good as all of the other ones. And we even have 20-inch rims on this, so there is really good ride quality. It's right in line with that of the Highlander and all of its big competition like that. And I will also get a sound level reading um, so we can compare to, to those rivals. And we're sitting at 56 decibels. That's a good reading. I believe the Highlander tested at like 55. So this may be a touch louder, but um, I mean, overall, very comfortable and very quiet. Right, and the big takeaway, of course, is that, you know, the SX Prestige, which many people are like cross shopping with uh, full luxury vehicles, uh, this pretty much inherited, inherits the same driving dynamics yeah. and characteristics. The other aspect of this powertrain setup is going to be your 8-speed automatic transmission. As we said with past Telluride reviews, this is a really excellent transmission. Uh, I feel like it really uh, matches a great balance between you know, uh, shifting up for efficiency but also being ready when my power demands change. Um, you know, it's always there, it's ready to go, it never feels flat-footed or anything like that. So. I really have no complaints about this transmission. Yeah. And as far as your drive trains, it's going to be standard front wheel drive or optional torque vectoring all wheel drive. Then for your fuel economy, since there is only one engine, you're only going to have two different fuel economies for front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Um, so front wheel drive is going to come in at 20, 26, 23, and all wheel drive is going to be rated at 21 combined, and that is right in line with that of what you get out of the rivals. Well guys, you know what time it is, it's airball and slam dunk time. We're going to start today with the airball for the S Telluride. Um, what we're going to say is <laughs> there's a little bit of missing equipment that is mainly standard on a lot of the competition regardless of what trim level for one like the manual climate controls here with only the four fan speeds that's normally you get like three zone automatic standard and also the gauge cluster that little tiny multi-function display is a little bit small for a vehicle in this segment but for the slam dunk um, you know really a lot of this is a slam dunk but what we're gonna say is that value proposition, especially when we're talking about the S trim, because so much of this is very similar to that fully loaded model we sampled earlier, or excuse me, late last year. Um, you know, you really get really that same kind of feel, but we're talking about a substantially cheaper price point compared to that fully loaded model, as well as something like a Highlander XSE. And, um, you know, Mason, go ahead and yeah. give them the actual <laughs> price tag of this so they well, know what we're talking about. Here's the proof. Be, yeah, you're going to be <laughs> pleasantly surprised. So the LX is going to be 31,990, S34,390, EX 37,390, SX 42,190. And this one, as equipped with all wheel drive, is going to come in plus destination of 1170 at 38,265 bucks. <laughs> 38 grand guys for this tell you right you get in that smooth v6 engine i mean there's so much to like with this <laughs> and for 38 grand it's just it right uh yeah like highlander xse the sporty highlander uh, we reviewed at about ten thousand more dollars than this so uh yeah definitely this is a strong value proposition 
And while it's not exactly important for a three-row SUV like this, I do want to mention the driving dynamics just briefly because the Telluride really is very manageable for the size. You know, as a three-row crossover, a lot of these feel kind of cumbersome and gigantic, but even on a smaller country road like we were just on, uh, really, it does a great job. It, like I said, it feels very manageable, I think is really an important characteristic, and I really like the way that the steering is weighted. But overall, definitely impressed with this S Telluride. You know, we were wondering, would we like it? As well as the SX Prestige models that we had sampled in the past. And, uh, you know, while it does, of course, lack a little bit of that extreme luxury like the SX Prestige, you really still have a fantastic overall experience. Well, guys, thanks for watching this in-depth review of the 2021 Kia Telluride S. We really appreciate you watching this video, and if you made it this far, you're a real one, and we really appreciate you. But be sure to help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below and joining this Car Confections family. All it's going to do is give you notification on our recent uploads, so be sure to do that and tap that notification bell as well. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.